Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video today, I will be showing you how to create a digital planner with hyperlinks in Canva. So here's a quick look at another digital planner that I created in Canva. If you want to see a video on how I did that, head to the description below. So to get started, head to canva.com. Once you're logged in, head to create a design. So with this digital planner, it will be in landscape format. Pick custom size. You're going to make your document 14 by 8.5, 14 inches wide and 8.5 inches tall. So initially when I set up my document, I set it up for 11 by 8.5. But then I decided to make it 3 inches wider. So now the document is 14 inches wide by 8.5 inches tall. So here I am using the resize and magic switch feature to resize my document. And this size allows for the digital planner to appear like an open book. So here I'm choosing a color from my background. I decided to go with this beige color. Once you have your background color selected, press R on your keyboard to insert a rectangle. I'm going to change the color of the rectangle to gray. I move it to the upper left hand corner and enlarge it. I'm making sure to leave a little bit of the background showing. So here we have the background color, which is that beige color. So this gray rectangle serves as our cover, so it can look like an open book. So now I'm going to copy the gray rectangle. If you right click, you can choose copy and then right click again and click paste, or you can pick duplicate. Once you've duplicated your rectangle, change the color to white. And we're going to make this white rectangle a little bit smaller than our gray rectangle. The white rectangle is going to serve as the paper within our digital planner. And again, you want to leave a little bit of that gray rectangle in the back showing. Now with the white rectangle, I'm going to round its corners. I also rounded the corners of the rectangle, but I did it a little bit less than the white rectangle. So I zoomed in here so you can see it up close. This digital planner is going to have tabs. So in order for the tabs to be displayed properly, I'm going to bring in the left and right sides of the white rectangle to allow for space for the tabs. After you have your rectangles positioned, now you're going to duplicate your page. I'm going to start to set up page two before I set up page one. So on page two, we need to get our spirals for our digital planner so it can look like an open book. Head to Elements, and in the search bar, you can type in spiral spine, binder rings. So since I was already testing out how to make this digital planner, I have these realistic silver binder rings in my recently used elements. So depending on what type of spiral or binder rings that you decide to use, you may decide to make it a little bit smaller. So in this case, I thought that the spiral was a little bit too big for the look that I was going for, so I made it smaller. And so here's how it looks closer up. So I'm going to duplicate this ring so that it fits the length of the planner. And you want to make sure that your binder rings are centered within the page. So I'm going to take my binder rings and group them and also lock them. So now we're going to work on the cover for our digital planner. Page one within the document is going to be our cover. I took the gray rectangle and decreased its size to half the size of the page. I made a copy of that rectangle and made it a little bit smaller and placed it on the left edge of the cover. With the smaller rectangle, I made the corner straight. So it looks more like the left edge of a book when it's closed. I decided to change the color of the gray rectangle to a lighter gray. And I used the change all feature within Canva to change the color of the rectangle in page one as well. Now I'm going to take the spiral from page two, copy it and paste it in page one. I'm going to put it on the left hand side of the cover. Once I have that spiral placed, I'm going to crop it a little bit by dragging the left hand side in a little bit. So now this looks like a closed spiral book. 
And once I have those placed, I'm going to group them back together and lock them. I'm going to give every page in this document a title. Page 1 is the cover. Page 2 is going to be the dashboard slash yearly page. Naming the pages will make it easier once you start to add hyperlinks to your digital planner. So now I'm going to design the cover. So for my cover, I just did a gradient background and text with the word planner on the front. Because I didn't really have a thought of how I wanted the cover to look, but I did want the cover to have some type of design to it. You can add effects to your text. If you click on the text box and click on effects, it'll bring up different styles that you can add to your text. I use the splice effect. And with each effect that you pick, you can change different settings about it. So it was at this point I realized I didn't necessarily like the beige background. It looked kind of flat to me. So in order to make this look a little bit more real, I decided to add in a wood background. So it would look as if your planner is on a table. So a good tip would be to make sure that you like the design of page one and two before you move on to copying and duplicating the pages. This will save you from having to go back through all the pages and change certain things about it. So now it's time to set up our dashboard yearly page. Hit T on your keyboard to bring up a text box. So for this page, the left hand side of the page is going to say this planner belongs to with a spot for you to put your name or any other information that you'd want to put in your digital planner. Press R on your keyboard to bring up a rectangle. I'm going to make it a thin, long rectangle. I'm going to change its color and round the corners. I'll make a couple copies of this rectangle to serve as lines for you to write your information in. So here I pressed R on my keyboard to bring up another rectangle. I'm going to enlarge it so that it fits half the width of the white rectangle. And once I have it sized to fit that one half of the white rectangle, I put a guideline at the midway point of that blue rectangle. So that way I know what is the center of each side of the page. After I inserted my guidelines, I went to File, Settings, and Lock Guides. So that way those don't move as I'm trying to move my elements around. I feel like I say this every video, but make sure that you lock certain elements that you don't want to move. I think pretty much in every video like this, I end up finding out I forgot to lock certain elements and then I'm trying to move other ones and ones that I didn't want to move start moving. So for the right hand side of this page, my thought was to have 12 little calendars for each month of the year. I thought to insert the table, make all the cells the same size and reduce it so I could fit 12 on this page. This is as small as this table gets. So there would be no way I'd be able to fit 12 of these on this one half. So I decided to go to elements and type in calendar icon and see if I could find a calendar that could get as small as I needed to be. So then I ended up finding this element right here. And luckily for me, I'm able to change the color. So here I am just testing to see if it gets smaller than I needed to be. And it does, so I ended up deleting that table. So I'm going to change the color of the top of the calendar from light green to gray. Once I've done that, I made it a little bit smaller and made two additional copies. I'm going to take the three total copies and line them up next to each other. I'm going to grab those three and duplicate them three more times to get my 12 small calendars. So now I'm going to grab all 12 small calendars and enlarge them to fit the page better. And I made sure to leave a little bit of space above each of the calendars because I'm going to put the names of the months above each one. So now I'm just going to write in all the names of the months.
So now I'm going to take one of the rounded rectangles from this left hand side of the planner and duplicate it. This is now going to become our tab. So I took that copy and moved it to the right hand side of the page. I'm making it smaller and I'm going to change the color of it. Once you get your desired shape and color for your tab, now it's time to duplicate them. So for this planner, I'm going to need 16 tabs. So click on your tab, make a copy of it. Decide how much spacing you want between each of the tabs. So for me, I like for my tabs to have a small amount of space in between each one. I feel like it makes it look a little bit more real. But after you have that, you want to copy those two and paste. Move that copy underneath the first two. Make as many copies as you need for your digital planner. Once you have the number of tabs that you'll need, you can highlight them all, you can right click, hit space evenly, and tidy up. You can right click, hit layers, and show layers. Because now what you want to do is take those tabs and put them underneath the white rectangle. You can decide to group all of your tabs together so that it's one unit as you're moving the layer. But if you do decide to group them together, you will have to ungroup the tabs when you start to label them and hyperlink them. So in order for me to put the tabs underneath that white rectangle, I have to ungroup the white and the gray rectangle from each other. Then I took my grouped tabs and dragged it in between the white and the gray rectangle. So now the tabs appear more realistic. After I moved those tabs underneath the white rectangle, I took the white and the gray rectangle and I locked those in place. So now it's time to add text to our tabs. Hit T on your keyboard to bring up a text box. Type in the name of the month. At this point, you want to change the font style, the size, the color, or anything like that because once we get it set up how we like, we're just going to copy and paste and change each of the tabs to the corresponding months. And I have 16 tabs, so 12 of those tabs will be for each of the months of the year. Another one of those tabs will get you back to the cover. Another one of those tabs will get you back to this page that we're working on here, the dashboard or yearly page. Another page will get you to notes. And another tab is just going to be blank, which will take you to a blank page that you can do whatever you want with. So I'm starting January on the third tab. Once I have that how I'd like, I'm going to copy and paste and do the remaining months. So now that I've gotten all the names of the months on the tabs, now it's time to get the little icons that represent the other pages within the digital planner. So head to Elements, and in the search bar, type in Notebook Icon. So once you find the icon that you like, you're going to want to resize it. You're going to need to resize it in order for it to fit on your tab. So the bottom tab, I'm going to leave blank. So I'm going to head back to Elements and type in Book Icon. And again, you'll find the icon that you want to use and resize it to fit your tab. And the tab with the book icon takes us back to the cover of the digital planner. So once you have all of your tabs set up, you're going to duplicate this page. So I'm going to title this page Jan Month. I decided to do monthly pages and also design one weekly page. But whoever is using this digital planner, they can always duplicate that weekly page wherever they need it. I'm going to delete everything off of this page and only leave behind the gray rectangle, the white rectangle, and the spiral in the January text. 
So now I'm going to set up the first monthly page. If you head to Elements, scroll down to Tables, and click the one you'd like to use. I picked the first option. So for this monthly page, the calendar is going to spread across both pages. On this left hand side, there's going to be four columns. And on the right hand side, there's going to be three columns and a space for notes. So on the top and left hand side of the table, if you click on the button with the three dots, you can size your rows or your columns equally. So I left a little space at the top so I can put in the days of the week. I also left some space on the far right hand side in order to add some lines for notes. And now I'm going to write in the days of the week. Did you know that you can't group tables together? So I tried to pick both sides of the table and group them together and there was no option for it. On the far right hand side, I'm going to add a space for notes. So the top half is going to say this month, and I'm going to put little check boxes with lines so that you can write down different goals or things you have to do for the month, and then you can check them off using the checkbox. And the bottom half is going to say next month with some lines, so that way you can write what you have planned for the following month. Hit R on your keyboard to bring up a square. You click on the color option and click on no color. Click on the border option and add a border. Make it as thick or thin as you'd like. Once you have your checkbox, you're going to type L on your keyboard to bring up a line. Go to the line options and change the line weight to 1. Resize it to fit your page. So once you have your line in your checkbox, you want to select them both and group them. Then you're going to make copies of that group, as many as you'd like. Now we're going to put in lines for the next month's section. So here we have our monthly page. So here's what we have created so far. The cover, our dashboard yearly page, and our monthly page. Now it's time to add in our hyperlinks. But before we do that, we need pages that the hyperlinks can go to. I duplicated the monthly page 13 more times. One for each month, a notes page, and a weekly page. Now I'm going to go through and name each of the pages. So in order to start our hyperlinks, we need to head back to the page that has all of our tabs. So I'm going to be hyperlinking both the tab and the text or icon that's on that tab. In the previous Digital Planner video, I did try to group both the tab and the text and try and link that, but it did not allow me to do that. So click on the tab, right click, and click on link. In the search bar, you can either type in the name of the page that you want to link to, or you can scroll through the pages in the document. Then click on the page you want it to link to. And I repeated that process for the icon of the book as well. I'm going to click on the tab, right click, click on link, and I'm going to scroll down to where it says Dashboard Yearly. Once you do that, hit Done. When you hyperlink text, it ends up underlining the text. I don't want my text to be underlined, so what I do is uncheck the Underline option. So now I'm going to go through and add all of my hyperlinks for my other tabs. You can also use a keyboard shortcut to get to the linking option faster. Once you click on the item you want to add a link to, hit Ctrl and K on your keyboard. I do have a Canva for Beginners video that I will leave in the description below. As of now, there are two videos in that series, 
but it goes through the basics and some more advanced things in Canva, including keyboard shortcuts. So now I'm going to add hyperlinks to the small calendars on this page. I had to ungroup the small calendars from their text, so that way I can add links to the names of the months. And with the names of the month, it will add the underline under it once you add that link. So all you have to do is head to the text toolbar and click on underline to deselect it. So now all of our tabs and our mini calendars are hyperlinked. Now it's time to copy and paste the tabs onto each monthly page. So now I'm going to highlight all of my tabs. I right clicked and selected copy. I scrolled down to the January monthly page, right clicked and selected paste. After you paste the tabs, you're going to then have to bring the white rectangle above the tabs. So in order to do that, click on one of your tabs and right click. Head to Layers and then click Show Layers. Now you can see on the left hand side of the screen, it shows all of the layers within this page. So what we have to do is take the tab and the text and put it underneath the white rectangle. So as I'm copying and pasting the tabs on each month, I'm also changing the month name as well. So now I'm going to make the notes page. I'm going to take everything off of this page except for these lines. So I'm going to take these lines and move them to the upper left corner of this right hand page. I'm going to extend them to fit the width of the page. And I also added the tabs on this page as well. Once you have all of your lines, you can select them all, right click and hit space evenly and tidy up. And you may also want to decide to group them. Once you have them grouped, you can copy that group and paste it to the left hand side of the page. So now I'm going to set up the weekly page. So I'm going to use this table that I've already used, but I'm going to make it a little bit different. And for the blank page, all I had to do was remove everything from the page. So here are all of our pages in our digital planner. We have a cover, a dashboard page, a page for each month, a notes page, a weekly page, and a blank page. So here's the digital planner in full screen.
So in order to use your digital planner, you do need to download it from Canva. If you head to share, download, and save it as a PDF. Once you've downloaded it, you can open it and use it in your note taking apps. So this concludes the video on how to make a digital planner with hyperlinks in Canva. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting the like button. Subscribe for more videos like this and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. Remember to check the description box for the tutorial for the previous digital planner as well as the two videos for Canva for beginners. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.